Hey, this is Harry and welcome to my entrance for Deeks Techniques Photoshop competition. Uh, got a lot of ground to cover today, so let's get cracking. What we've got here is a picture of my girlfriend in a castle in France that I took. I like it, but what I really don't like is the view out the window. I think it doesn't match the interior of the castle at all. I think it would look much better with storm clouds and lightnings and that sort of thing. So that's what I've gone and done. Uh, as you can see, the interior now matches what it would be like if there was a lightning strike. So I'm going to talk you through how I did that. Switch over here and we've got the same background there with some very basic adjustments, just a little crop and slight coloration adjustments, I think. And uh, we've also got another picture. This is storm clouds over the Mediterranean Sea by a guy called Ian Britton. I got it on Flickr through a Creative Commons search. I'll provide the link just below the video. Um, right, so what we need to do is we need to duplicate the background layer and bring that up above the storm clouds. Uh, we also need to turn storm clouds back on there. Then we're going to use the technique from Deeks Techniques 82, tracing an image with a path outline, to create a mask, masking out this window, which will let us see right through to the lovely storm clouds we've got in back. So to do that, as Deke describes, zoom in here, uh, and then you grab your uh, shape tool, make sure it's set to path, and just draw a rough square around the window. Then push the A key to grab the arrow tool. Make sure you've got the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, rather than the path selection tool. And you just drag each corner until it's where you want it to be. If you're using the black arrow tool, it will drag the whole shape, which isn't what you want at all. Uh, now, I actually made a path earlier. As I said, I don't have much time. Uh, so if I switch over to the path panel, you'll see window rectangle. Once you've traced the window using Deke's technique, uh, you just command click on the path outline in there and you get a lovely selection of the window. Switch back over to the layers panel and we're going to click down here on the add layer mask icon, sorry, the add layer mask icon there, which creates a lovely layer mask, except it isn't. We've got those horrible trees masked into the lovely clouds. So we're going to push command I, I think it's control I on windows, to switch that mask around which leaves us with the nice clouds looking through the window. Next up, we need to add the lightning. I'm going to use the technique Deke described in Deke's Techniques 62, Synthetic Lightning, to do so. Uh, basically what you do is you grab the brush tool, make sure it's a nice hard brush. Uh, you have to take note of the pixel value up there, make sure you're painting with 100% opacity, painting on a new layer, obviously, and you just paint a really rough lightning value. That should be black, so push D to make sure I've got the default color selected, and then redo that. Uh, so you just paint some really rough lightning bolts, drag them below the layer mask, just so we can see how they'll actually look. Uh, then you're going to convert it to a smart object and apply some smart filters. Deep describes it far better than I can, and as I said, time pressure with this 10 minute limit, so I'm not going to go through describing the whole technique. But basically it's really simple, just follow Deke's instructions. And then, here's the ones I made earlier. Uh, need to just drag them below the layer mask and then you can see that the lightning bolt half appears as if it's coming from the cloud. The issue there is that there's sort of doesn't look like it's really coming from the cloud. So all we need to do is create a new layer just underneath the mask there and grab our brush tool, paint with white, make sure we've got a soft brush this time rather than a hard brush uh, with a lower opacity maybe 20% and just a slightly bigger brush and paint some white into the cloud. Now I think it will look a bit better if we switch that over to overlay mode and just blend it a little better, now you're starting to get a bit of the bright flash you would get from the cloud uh, if lightning was actually coming from it. Right, I'm happy with how things are starting to look outside the window there. Uh, what I don't like is how things look inside. It sort of looks like a, a very daylight scene rather than a nice stormy night scene. Uh, really don't like this big red splodge down in the corner here, so we're going to get rid of that next. Do that, we're going to grab a hue saturation layer and we're going to use the target tool here. Click on that, grab the red down here. As you can see, it switches to reds up in the control panel there and just slide that to the left and it totally desaturates all the reds out of the image. Now, I don't want all the reds gone from the image, I only want it gone from the brickwork. As you can see, it's made a total mess of my girlfriend's dress there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our brush tool, uh, make sure we've got black selected, make sure we've got a nice soft brush, and we're just going to paint in at uh, slightly higher, higher opacity than uh, before, so about 70%. We're just going to paint some colour back into the centre here, especially into Eva there. We don't want her to be totally washed out just yet. There. Uh, and as you can see, we've got our nice layer mask appearing 
up there. The next thing to do then is to make the whole image slightly bluer. If you've, if you've seen the lightning flash, it's not warm yellow light, it's a harsh blue light. So we're going to use another hue saturation layer to do that. And we're going to use the values that I uh, found out earlier just by playing around with it. Also, make sure you've got the colorize box ticked. One of the weirdest things about being over here is getting used to the Z's and things like that rather than S's. So the hue is 206. So let's click in there to control that. 206. Saturation is 40. And that just looks awful. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. So what we're going to do is we're going to dial the opacity right back down to about 30 something percent. And that's starting to give the blue tinge that I like the look of and we'll add to that more a little later. As well as giving everything a sort of blue tinge, lightning desaturates everything a lot and makes things appear almost black and white. So we're gonna use that we're gonna do that using a technique I picked up from Deke's Techniques 55, painting a colourful car black. Now obviously there's no colourful car to paint black here, so we're just gonna use the same technique to get a slightly different effect. What we're going to do here is we're going to switch over to the channels panel and have a look at some sort of black and white images of the of the image. Uh, as you can see, if we click into the red channel, sorry, RGB, red, we'll start to see the black and white that's in the red channel. Then we click into the green and we get the black and white from the green channel. And then we click in blue and we get a black and white interpretation of the blue channel. Uh, I really like to look at the green channel, like how it looks in black and white. Uh, so I think we're going to use that. Click back into RGB back over to layers and create a new layer with command shift n and we'll call this layer green and um, then we're going to use deeks techniques we're going to go image apply image uh, make sure we're applying to merged if we we're applying it to background layer or one of the layers below we'd end up applying the trees back into the center we don't want that at all we want to make sure we're applying the green layer blend mode set to normal opacity we'll leave it 100 percent for now but we're just going to dial it back in a second that will go ahead and apply that and as you can see, we've got this nice black and white image laid on top. Now it's too black and white. It looks great in black and white, but I think it's too much. So we're just going to dial the opacity back to about 66% there to get some of the colour back into the dress and get the blue tinge slightly back into the walls. Um, now the next thing we have to do is make everything bluer. The lightning flash really isn't blue enough for me, so we're going to add another hue saturation there. I'm going to use similar values earlier. Make sure colorize is ticked again. Uh, set the hue to 206 again. Saturation we're going to leave at 25 this time rather than 4. We're going to make it slightly paler and leave that in. Again, it looks awful with that horrible just bright blue, but we're going to dial the opacity back really far this time into around 14, 15%. And that's starting to give the washed out blue tinge that I'm looking for. Right, the final thing to do is to control the lighting in this image. It looks like it's still a daylight scene inside. You know, it doesn't really look like there's been a bright lightning flash. There's too much difference between the shadows and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to dodge and burn the image to control where the light falls. So Command Shift N to create a new layer. We're going to call this D plus B. Uh, this is a nice little trick. We turn the, uh, the blending mode to soft light and then hit fill with soft light neutral color, 50% gray. Click OK. That means that if we paint with white or black, we're going to dodge and burn the image respectively. Make sure we've got a nice soft brush up there. Nice low opacity. 20% is perfect. Uh, white is selected, so we'll be dodging. If I push X, I'll grab the black tool, so I'll be burning. Now I want to get this sort of light, lighter uh, area here to match roughly with here. So I'm going to grab white and I'm going to dodge this area of the image a little bit. And as you can see, as I paint with white, if you look over here, you can start to see a bit of white appearing over here, and the whole area starts to brighten up. Nicely gone a little too far there, so just switch that back. And switch over to white, and just switching from black to white, starting to get that to match, to get rid of the sort of harsh shadows. So it makes it look like the light is coming straight in through the window, rather than coming in from an angled sun. That's, that's starting to look really nice, I think. And we also want to make the whole center of the image brighter just to draw focus to that. So I'll switch to white there again and then start to paint in some white into the area here and lots into either there to make sure that when someone just looks at this image, their eye is instantly drawn to the center uh, and exactly where I want it to be. And I think that's done. As you can see, we've taken the, uh, the original image, this nice picture, but with the horrible 
trees outside and some weird colouring around and turned it into this nice stormy scene from a horror movie.